Hi, I'm Sachin Goel, Medical Director for Structural Heart Interventions at Houston Methodist Hospital. I'm going to talk to you about transcatheter edge-to-edge -edge repair in multi-segment disease. Here are some of my disclosures. Uh, we'll start with a case. Uh, the patient is um, an 82-year-old male with previous history of DVT, atrial fibrillation, stroke, and diabetes. Patient presented with severe mitral regurgitation and symptoms of dyspnea upon walking one to two blocks, which had been progressive for the last four to six months. Here is the transesophageal echocardiogram with and without color, clearly demonstrating a very degenerated mitral valve with multiple prolapsing segments, as you can see, and a flail in the P1 scallop uh, region of the valve, um, as you can see here, with very severe eccentric mitral regurgitation uh, that is directed from the lateral aspect to the medial aspect of the valve. So very severe torrential mitral regurgitation and a very degenerated uh, mitral valve. Here are the corresponding 3D images with and without color. Again, you can uh, appreciate very nicely on this uh, 3D on fast view that there are multiple prolapsing scallops here uh, in this mitral valve. And the, pro the, the flail segment is here in the lateral aspect of the mitral valve. Uh, and this is the P1 scallop. Here is the aortic valve at 12 o'clock position, uh, the anterior leaflet, posterior leaflet, and here is the intraatrial septum. So the lateral part of the valve, uh, the, of the posterior leaflet corresponds with a P1 scallop. And you can see the mitral regurgitation on the color uh, a 3D image on the right side. It originates underneath that P1 scallop, and it's fanning from posterior to anterior, and from the lateral aspect of the valve to the medial aspect of the valve. So extremely severe mitral regurgitation responsible for this patient's symptoms. So the question becomes, how do we treat this? Should this patient have surgical mitral valve repair? Should we perform mitral transcatheter edge-to-edge -edge repair using MitraClip? Should we consider transcatheter mitral valve replacement or treat this patient uh, uh, with medical management only? Uh, so just a little bit of uh, uh, background on edge-to-edge uh, -edge repair uh, with mitral clip and Barlow's disease. This patient you know, clearly has Barlow's disease with multiple prolapsing segments. So uh, prior studies for mitral clip have excluded patients with Barlow's disease or multi-segment disease. Uh, this was a multi-center uh, retrospective study which was recently published in Jack Intervention. Uh, there were about 69 patients with Barlow's disease and 69 patients without Barlow's or non-Barlow's disease. Mean age in this study was about 78.5 years. There was actually no difference in success uh, with uh, Barlow's disease versus non-Barlow's disease uh, with the Mitra clip. Uh, of course, these are selected patients. Uh, more clips were utilized, not surprisingly, in patients with Barlow's disease, and the procedure took longer duration uh, to complete uh, in patients with Barlow's disease. There was no difference in the gradients between Barlow's versus non-Barlow's. Uh, Pre-discharge MR severity of two plus or less, there was no difference between Barlow's and non-Barlow's. Uh, the incidence of one plus or less mitral regurgitation, residual mitral regurgitation was higher in non-Barlow's disease, 46 versus 26%. However, at three years, there was no difference in the incidence of moderate or less mitral regurgitation uh, out to three years. Uh, there was no difference in need for surgery or mortality uh, over three year uh, duration in this study. Of course, the caveats are that these are small numbers of patients from multiple centers, um, uh, carefully selected patients that the operators or the teams thought uh, could undergo successful edge-to-edge uh, -edge repair. Uh, so this patient uh, was felt to be a high surgical risk uh, candidate uh, in, our, uh, in our center. And our plan was to consider edge-to-edge -edge repair. And uh, based on the anatomy, after careful discussion with our uh, imaging team, uh, we felt that we could uh, position two clips uh, one in this fashion from the P1 uh, scallop of the posterior leaflet to the A2, uh, perpendicular to the line of coaptation, and likely going to need a second clip uh, medial to that clip uh, from the A2 uh, to the P2 scallop region. And this is the corresponding uh, uh, color uh, 3D representation of what our clipping plan would be for this patient. Uh, so here is the first clip. The routine uh, transeptal puncture was performed under 3D uh, echo guidance and fluoroscopy. And we have a XGW clip, which has been advanced uh, through the clip uh, guide uh, above the mitral valve in the left atrium. And we are positioning this 
uh, sort of 2 o'clock to 8 o'clock uh, to align this perpendicular to the line of coaptation. Uh, remember, if we are positioning the clip in the center, then we go 12 o'clock, 6 o'clock, because the line of uh, uh, coaptation is perpendicular in that way. However, in the, in the, in the lateral and the medial aspect, uh, we have to align this uh, slightly differently and not in a 12 to 6 orientation. And uh, we use 3D MPR as demonstrated in the right panel here uh, to align this clip and advance the clip uh, across the, uh, the flail segment uh, of the P1 scallop uh, in the mitral valve. Here is the 2D grasping views, which is typically a long axis view. And you can see the two arms uh, of the clip are open. And you can clearly see the big P1 flail. And here's the anterior leaflet. And under careful visualization, we retract the clip and uh, allow the flail segment of the posterior leaflet to fall on the uh, posterior arm and the anterior leaflet to fall on the anterior arm and then drop the grippers. And you can see clearly the grippers are bouncing in both these case, uh, both uh, arms, which indicates an, an excellent grasp. So we use this uh, uh, 2D images to visualize the grasp. This is the most important part of the procedure. And here is the result after the first clip. So we put the clip as planned from the A2 uh, to the P1 scallop region, and you can see the clip is there, and there is some residual regurgitation medial uh, to the clip as expected, and you can see the corresponding 3D color image on the bottom panel here, uh, with the clip nicely uh, affixed to the A2 and P1 scallop with a nice tissue bridge, and a uh, small leak of, a small jet of mitral regurgitation medial uh, to the clip as we had anticipated. The gradient across the mitral valve was only one millimeter mercury, and then we bring in a second clip uh, on the top panel here in a similar fashion. This is also an XTW clip, uh, which is oriented more in a 12 to 6, uh, 12 o'clock to 6 o'clock uh, perpendicular to the line of coaptation. And again, the corresponding 2D long axis views uh, demonstrating the clip underneath the mitral valve. And carefully, the clip is retracted and the anterior and the posterior leaflets are, are grasped, as you can see in these images. And on the left panel, you can very nicely see the, uh, the grippers are bouncing, indicating the, the leaflets are between the uh, gripper uh, and, the, and the clip arms. And then the clip is closed, again, demonstrating uh, a good grasp. Uh, and then moving on, the 3D with and without color, you can see the second clip is in the A2P2 scallop region. And uh, the uh, mitral regurgitation is very successfully uh, uh, nearly abolished with a very trivial amount of mitral regurgitation between the two clips, as noted on the right-sided uh, image, which is a 3D color image. This patient, uh, here is the corresponding uh, 2D uh, color images, intracommissural and long axis. You can see the two clips and very trivial uh, residual mitral regurgitation uh, after two mitral clips have been implanted on the valve. And the final uh, 3D with and without color after the clips have been released uh, in the top panel. And the mitral gradient uh, on the bottom, uh, despite two clips, their mitral residual gradient is only one millimeter of mercury, uh, indicating an excellent result with a very trivial residual mitral regurgitation and a, uh, a, a negligible gradient across the mitral valve. So in conclusion, in selected patients with Barlow's disease, multi-segment disease, uh, tear can be safely performed with the fourth generation mitral clip device in high surgical risk patients. I thank you very much for your attention.